everybody about mobilization, getting ready to go to World War One. President Wilson had to get people ready to go to World War One because they weren't particularly fired up about going over there and potentially giving their lives for other people. So he had to make them think, hey, this is a fight worth fighting. Uh, he created the Committee on Public Information, and it was to give it people information about the war. Uh, he had a group of men called the Four Minute Men. What they would do is they would go around to movie theaters and parks and public places and give people speeches about what was happening in Europe and why we needed to go fight. Uh, the newsreels that they made in the day would uh, show images of the heroism of the British and the French and the barbarism of the Germans. The, the Germans were evil and the British and the French were on the good side and they were going to win. And um, the foreign language newspapers of the United States were watched very carefully for anything that may have uh, gone against the United States, you know, articles and such that would that would potentially harm the country during this time of war. Um, we have uh, new acts being put in place by the government, the Espionage Act. Espionage is spying, giving away your country's secrets, um, giving away government's political, technological, or military secrets. And we have sedition, which is conduct or speech that incites people to rebel against authority. Um, we put limits on free speech at the time of World War I. People were arrested as opponents of the war. Uh, we, we checked the mail for anti-war mail, and we would seize that. And about 900 people were put in jail for violating the Espionage and Sedition Acts during World War I. Uh, of course, we had a draft. It was called the Selective Service Act, 1917. And when you turn 18 years old, you too will have to sign up for the Selective Service. You'll have to go to the uh, courthouse and you'll have to make sure that you're signed up for the draft. Uh, I think maybe just boys. Uh, girls... I don't know if they have to sign up for the draft. Uh, three million Americans were forced to go to war during World War I. Uh, there was still a lot of racism. Of course, this is before the end of segregation. And African-American units were segregated from the white units. Um, and they weren't allowed to fight together. So there was still systematic racism in the United States. Um, and the war needed money. So the United States started selling liberty bonds. A bond is a long-term investment that you make. And about half of American families at the time bought uh, liberty bonds. Uh, they ranged from $5 to $100. If you were a regular, just an average person on the street, if you were a big business, you could buy $10,000 liberty bonds. They'd usually pay you back 50 to 75% of their value 10, 15, 25, or 30 years later. So just, if, you, if you bought a $10,000 Liberty Bond uh, 25 years later, you could probably get back about $1,750. I mean $17, um, these bonds went to the United States Army to pay for training for the troops, supplies for the troops, war machines for the troops, Transportation of the troops and food for the troops. Everything was spent, of course, on the troops because they were fighting. Um, the War Industries Board was an oversight board that was put in place to take control of the production of steel and copper and cement in the United States. We also had to guarantee farmers high prices for their crops. We wanted to take their crops and give them to the U.S. Army so they could feed the troops. And um, citizens were encouraged to not eat meat on Monday, meatless Monday, not eat wheat on Wednesday, wheatless Wednesdays, and uh, to grow victory gardens, anywhere they could grow food, in between houses, in a backyard, anywhere, grow some food so that so that we can send uh, the major farmers' crops over to the military. Uh, the military needs that food. Uh, there was also kind of this prejudice against Germans at the time, and people thought, hey, Germans like beer, so you shouldn't drink alcohol. 
people thought uh, anti-German feelings would lead to less drinking of alcohol, the United States needed to keep the food crops such as grapes and wheat that were used to make most alcohol of the time. And uh, the president limited alcoholic content in beverages. So there was less alcohol in your beers and wines. And, of course, they wanted to save fuel, too. Hence, gasless Sundays. People were encouraged not to drive around very far on Sundays. Uh, you know, don't take that Sunday drive. Um, daylight savings time at this time was also introduced to give factory workers more time to work in the factory. Uh, they they use less lights in the factory when, when there's daylight outside because they had a lot of big windows. Um, and, and then uh, one example of the Espionage Act violation was Charles Shank. He was, he was printing materials trying to get people to avoid the draft. And he thought, hey, I've got freedom of speech and expression. I'm allowed to criticize the government. But he was arrested, and he claimed his freedom of speech was violated. Um, the Supreme Court down the line ruled that Freedom of speech can be restricted uh, when it causes potential danger to the United States or in times of a national emergency. And uh, <clears throat> tomorrow I will talk more about the rest of the section. Thanks.